Uh, here's a radio, or I think it's a radio. It's supposed to be a radio. It came in the mail this morning. So let's open it up and see what it is. I started to use a chainsaw or a power saw for the box opening, but I figured I'd leave those tricks up to Shango 066. So I guess I'll be a chicken and just use a razor blade. It's fun doing this one-handed. Oh wow, they double boxed it. So there may be hope for the world yet. Seems like so many of these eBay sellers just throw stuff in a box and whatever happens is going to happen. Oh, wow, they even used packing peanuts. I can't believe it. Okay. And it looks to have arrived unharmed. Okay. So this is a, a General Electric Model H220A AM radio from around 63, 64. As you can see, it has the civil defense markings on the dial. This radio runs on batteries or alternating current, and I believe this was designed to hang on the wall. And here's the battery compartment door, which they took off to keep from getting damaged. Now the seller said this radio worked, for the exception of the volume control being a little scratchy when turned, so let's see if they were correct. Okay, now the moment of truth. Well, they were right about static in the volume control. That's a hard to receive station, so that's shows the sensitivity is pretty good. All you have good. to do is send us your tight announcement. Our country. Isn't this yet another? And I, and I know I, I'm... Wasting. I can tell you what they don't do. They don't laugh. The ruling in June. The final vote, obviously, sometime... the new oldies R&B station. Learning to lean on okay, so let's do something about the... Well, I see where some of the interference was coming from, from the camera. Okay, let's do something about that noisy volume control and analyze this radio a little bit. And here's the inside of the radio. I see a date code on the tuning capacitor of 
6321 so that confirms that this is a 63 model here's our volume control right here what we'll do to solve that static problem is we'll spray some of this uh, control cleaner into the opening on the volume control where the terminals are and run the control back and forth a few times and that ought to take care of the problem so let's see here see how well I can do this one-handed okay run this back and forth a few times okay looks like that took care of the problem okay now there's some things I want to point out about this radio here's the schematic diagram to this radio and this particular unit is actually built using modular construction it's not showing up well here but okay this first module right here is the converter module that contains the mixer transistor and pretty much the only connections you have are the B plus ground uh, antenna connector connections and connections for the tuning capacitor and the signal output second module is the IF module that contains two IF amplifier transistors as well as the detector diode and the third module is the audio module that contains the audio driver and output transistors and the only other circuitry on the main PC board is the power supply components and the tuning condenser or capacitor and it goes into detail about the modular construction that it's simpler to repair these types of radios just by replacing the defective module instead of the servicer trying to repair the module to the component level however in today's world you would have to repair the module to component level because these replacement modules have been unavailable for well let's see this radio was made in 63 the modules probably haven't been available since 65 so so there you go and as you can see the various modules are soldered to the main printed circuit board in order to repair one of these modules you would of course first have to remove the whole chassis and then you would have to unsolder the module from the printed circuit board uh, do what repair work was necessary and then solder it all back together now since this radio works so well and there's generally low voltage involved I'm not going to worry about replacing the electrolytic capacitors right now even if one one of these capacitors were to fail there wouldn't be very much danger of anything blowing up since there's low voltage involved so I think for now I'm going to leave well enough alone and put this thing back together and enjoy it. Oh yeah, and one thing to remember with these older plastic radios, don't go crazy tightening these screws because this plastic is often brittle and will break very easily and the last thing we want to do is break the mounting studs. Okay, there you go, my new 1963 GE transistor wall radio. Sounds of Junior Walker and the All Stars. It's what most Americans want at life's end. Or go to a hospice care. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching and more to come later.